All right, welcome everybody uh, to this week's developer update. Um, what day is this going to come out? Sunday, all right? Um, yeah, Sunday the 17th. 18th. Um, is it the 18th? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, sorry, you're right. It's past midnight at my place. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. The 17th, yeah. yeah. 17th. Uh, so I'm here with QX. Uh, CW still under the weather. Uh, send him, yeah, wishes uh, to him and his family. Hope he's feeling better. So what's uh what's the discussion in the community this week, QX? What well, are we I, talking about? I came out I came out west a little early to check out your couch and sit with you here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure. Um. So, uh, well, today in dev chat there was quite a hoopla about some um. Uh, about block time, about the future of block time, about weak, weak blocks, and all that kind of stuff. It was a it was a really good chat for quite a while, actually. It's a it's the busiest the dev chat's been since you know the weekly updates, uh, mm -hmm. in between. Uh, so I, I guess we could talk about that and maybe get sure. you know, because a lot of people come into chat and they're like, oh, you know, it was great, but goddamn, it's you know, I can't wait two minutes for a transcend. <laughs> Let, let's start let's start from i guess first assumptions most people don't understand proof of work anymore it seems uh, to where proof of work like the idea of finality comes with the amount of energy that's added after a block clears right so you get this idea of hash rate consensus and finality in, in proof of work is is uh, probabilistic in nature right and uh, so the deeper you go into a chain, uh, the higher the probability of that being secure, right? Yep. Um, so, you know, in for like from a net perspective of security, uh, you can speed up blocks, right? But that doesn't necessarily change much when it comes to the overall hash rate consensus, because you're still talking about uh, the same uh, distribution of mining pools, right? distribution of miners all adding energy to the chain and it, it, it takes uh time in order for uh let's say this idea of finality to occur in proof of work um ergo has always been uh I, I would say conservative when it comes to security assumptions and there's also a secondary benefit that um we have to take into account and that's decentralization right uh because when you have uh, more data pouring into a chain, it opens up the question, what do you do with it all, right? And so obviously, if you're talking about um, increasing the uh, block time, you're also talking about increasing the state size, uh, you know, some relative factor, uh, depending on how you adjust, you know, block time, right? You know, so we can, we can look at something uh, that's like, I don't know, the Solana side where you basically need like an enterprise grade database in order to participate because everything is moving so fast and data is flowing. Uh, you know, Casper's kind of got the same thing. I can't remember what it was. 20 terabytes a year or some. Insane, you know, yeah. Yeah, some some wild number. Uh, then, you know, you have a question, okay, well, who's going to carry that long term, right? Is there some incentive built into the protocol to handle that or is it just going to be like hey qx you want to sync a you know 80 terabyte blockchain right and doesn't doesn't really make sense uh from the perspective of trying to put it in the hands of as many people as you can yeah exactly and then you have a secondary issue which is you know in, in proof of work uh when you have two blocks that are proposed within latency time right uh, it's not like the exact same time, but within the latency of the network, um, you know, you get this idea of a temporary fork that then settles with the longest chain, right? You get the uncle block idea, yep. which tends to make the uh, chain history a little bit messier, right? Um, you know, uh, whenever you have that, uh, let's say uncle occur, then you have a certain rollback for certain users potentially in those blocks. And, you know, being a smart contract platform, that can be messy in and of itself. That's an assumption that we have to make and look at. But, you know, most people, uh, 
I don't know. Maybe it's uh, just a trend of society. Like everybody wants it faster, cheaper, easier. Uh, you know, I, I personally, you know, look at the world and say, well, usually faster, cheaper, easier means shitty quality, but yep. you know, that's always the trade off. Right. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to manage that, but it's, it's fascinating to see uh, the dev community, especially say, Hey, we want faster block times and maybe confirmations uh, via weak blocks won't get us to where we want to be, right? It's a messy conversation, but it needs to be, right? Whenever you have this type of uh, governance decision, uh, you need to hear the pros and cons, weight both sides. And, and it should be something where critical thinking leads the way instead of uh, kind of emotional uh, retraction to people's positions and then shit fighting. So I think, we'd, I think the Ergo community generally does really well with... Uh, you know, kind of maintaining class when there's disagreements or it was pretty uh, classy in there. That's for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I, I understand both sides. Uh, you know, I tend to favor uh, security and decentralization over speed all day, every day. Like that's, so, that's my position. Right. And so it's like, uh, you know, if you were to say, okay, well, if you move from two minute blocks to one minute block, right. Uh, eh, you know, things would, you know, kind of be a little messy. We'd have to change the emissions based on the new block rate. And, uh, you know, there's it's a, a lot, lot of stuff that's dependent on using yeah, yeah, block, yeah. block time for average time. Yeah. You know, you pull a brick in the foundation, you might have to rebuild a wall, right? Yeah. That's, that's just reality in these systems. Um, you know, but I love the fact that the dev community is showing up and talking about what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, it. that's important. Um, you know, it's also important to understand the pros, the cons, um, you know, if there is change, what that uh, is going to look like. And, you know, I, I do think that, um, you know, ultimately the community is going to decide, right? Like there's, there's, so. yeah. <laughs> there's, this, there's this idea in, in uh, the blockchain space that code is law, right? And a very unpopular opinion, but I, I think that over time aggregates to true is uh, that actually social consensus is law because if, you know, you lose a certain amount of social actors that, you know, either fork something and move on with the fork or they move on to another project, then, you know, what's the law with no people to uh, use it. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there, there's, there's a certain balance there. Um, I don't know. Let the let the let the discussion happen. Let it progress. Uh, I, I think that worst case, everybody learns a lot. Well, what, what 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 you're talking there? Uh, uh, something popped up in my head. What does what does a really fast chain like let's say um, um, uh, Elf or Elephium or Casper? What do they do? With those uncle blocks where there is, you know, they get pretty well, far yeah. ahead in the chain when well, it's fast. If there's well, that to roll we back, have to, we have to remember Casper is not a DAG so, or is a, not a blockchain, it's a DAG. So that's a different oh, animal. Right. Okay. That's a different animal. Um, you know, ETH uh, <laughs> tends to incentivize funny things. Uh, so, you know, they were actually paying miners that hit uncle blocks. Um, no, well, that's what to do what? Well, a reward. Like, hey, you hit an uncle block, you didn't get the full block reward, but here's a tip. Okay, okay. You know, uh, which is messy, but when you have an infinite emission, you know, fuck it, why not, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I guess uh, that's going to be unpopular now that they're what ultrasound hyper deflationary money or something. But uh, you know, when you have infinite emissions, you can kind of play games with that. Uh, with their goal, you know, if if we ever did speed up block times, I don't see Uncle Blocks doing anything other than causing disappointment. This is what it is, right? But then you get into this idea that your your chain uh, is going to get a lot messier, right? Um, because you know, as you decrease the block time, uh, you know, you you're going to hit more blocks within that latency period of the network, and you're going to experience more of these short term or potentially long term forks and chain history is going to get messy. So right? wouldn't we wouldn't we see wouldn't 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 
you know, with 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 larger adoption of of this, let, let's say let's say Ergo gets some pretty big adoption. Uh, mm-hmm. We're integrated in a bunch of DApps and a bunch of cross ecosystems, and and they do find a way to increase blockchain that satisfies people time. So you know, let's say we have a ten second or a thirty second blockchain time, and mm-hmm. you get all these orphan blocks. So mm-hmm. wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you think that um um like um exchanges or or DApp places uh that you're spending or utilizing your money your your erg wouldn't they increase their confirmation times before they would, you know, agree on a consensus? So instead of like, you know, you're doing things now where you get one block confirmation, you're good. You know, if there's going to be a lot of orphan blocks in, you know, in the chain. Yeah, to if, they're, if they're smart, the answer is yes. Right. Because as, as I was saying in the beginning, uh, the idea of finality is just based on the amount of energy and kind of hash rate yeah. agreement uh, after um you know, a block is hit, right? And so if you say right now within 10 minutes, you know, there's pretty strong assumptions of finality on Ergo. Well, if we speed up the blocks, that probably isn't going to actually change too much in the end, right? And so if you look at it from the perspective of finality, uh, you know, you're just making things a little bit messier, yeah. right? I mean, so people... Get- so people feel better because they can see confirmations and say, ah, you know, yeah, see my confirmation on chain. But then you also have this parallel problem where periodically they'll, you know, be a temporary fork in the chain. And they say, hey, I can see my confirmation and it's gone. And then mm-hmm. you know, that, that's going to lead to some fun. Right. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> you know, so it's it's hard to say. I, I understand, you know, people's desire to deliver uh better user experience right and i think weak box is a really interesting path towards that but we also have to remember that proof of work is not designed for fast finality that's not the intent right that's never been the intent if you look at this idea of finality being based on energy added after a, a you know a block is added to the chain so you know i know that uh you know, most people will then get away from proof of work and they'll get into more exotic civil resistance and consensus mechanisms to say, hey, you know, we are about fast finality. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in a traditional blockchain, that's proof of work. That's just not the assumption that you want to have. And this is what it is. Yeah, definitely. If, if anybody is... um not aware of the chat that happened today i suggest you hop in there and it starts at about i don't know when did that start noon yeah. one two something like that mid-day. yeah but I, I i think it's worth covering since we're talking about like one of the yeah. downsides quote unquote of proof of work there's huge upsides um you know permissionless interaction that uh you know can occur just by joining via hardware um you have this idea of a fair game uh, in terms of the distribution where uh, you know, anybody anywhere can hop on and basically they compete or race for emissions, you know, versus when you get into something that starts at a single point or a small group of actors, um, you know, the game is always going to be based on their decision to decentralize the network. Because, you know, if you were a Genesis actor in proof of stake network and you just decided to stake indefinitely, right, set it, forget it, um, there's nothing anyone can do to actually decentralize your position over time, right? That's kind of wild to think about. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you're you're always dependent on like the choice rather than like a programmed game. Um, So there's a lot of benefits to proof of work, but fast finality is not necessarily one of them, right? That's not the intent of of that setup. And I mean, the spirit of Ergo and everything, you increase the block time, you know, as you said, you're going to get a much higher um, uh, in at least hardware requirements for carrying around the state and the, and the history of the database. So you're looking at, you know, if you're trying to decentralize and have the most people utilizing this chain, you know, you're going to rule out, you know, Raspberry Pi nodes or, or those kind of things where you're running full nodes, you're going to have to ask your node runners to invest in some storage at least 
um, to keep that running. And, and then if the chain even bloats anymore, you're going to be asking them to increase their, their memory as well, footprint in their computer. So you're... Yeah, and, you're, and people coming in at a lower latency, uh, you know, are going to have a greater disadvantage. That's another thing you have to consider, right? Where if you look at the latency time of a network, yeah. um, you know, if you speed it up, that little lag that on the two minute block might never really yeah it doesn't matter there know, yep. matter too much uh, could suddenly be kind of catastrophic to where everybody has a huge advantage and then if you extrapolate that out well what if we're also talking about uh, you know race conditions to get into a block right and you know it, the it is true that sometimes if you speed these systems up you're making it a first world system mm -hmm. yeah. and then if you really screw it up you get like the OFAC compliance relays on the uh, ethereum where at this point they're just like back of the bus if you're you know coming from the wrong jurisdiction into the wrong block you're just gonna wait there is no fair race <laughs> and so the the idea of a fair race is actually pretty important um you know that's one thing that proof of work is kind of built around so there's a lot to consider a lot of pros a lot of cons a lot of trade-offs um, you know, and then ultimately the question is, what's the social consensus and, you know, who's going to build it, test it, make sure that it's secure if there is, if there are changes coming. So it's a lot to unpack, you know, I yeah, get I, that. I get that a lot of the times in crypto, it's just like stupid marketing, you know, yeah, we're a trillion TPS yeah. and then there's no looking at all of these like factors that counterbalance each other, but. Yeah, it makes me wonder if these things kind of things go in trends, at least where, you know, speed is a thing that people are looking at right now. TPS, you know, they came off of Bitcoin, the original thing, which was what it's like. How What's the block time there? I don't even yeah. know. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. But, so, you know, with, with a floating difficulty. So every once in a while you get 40 minute block. Yeah. Yeah. So you come mm -hmm. off of that and, and the next step is to make that faster and better. And mm -hmm. I, I just would hope that people would see that you're not reaching towards something that diminishes the what ergo was in the first place in its intent as far as that goes so well i i would say again you know we need to circle back to where we started in terms of finality right because that's ultimately what you're drawing your long term security assumption from in proof of work yeah Good talk. You know, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I, I don't have the answer, right? I, I encourage good discussion. Um, you know, I see different sides from, you know, different people in different positions. I, you know, let them talk it out. Now, what's the, what's the, what's the, um, what's the drive of putting this at the current level as opposed to having some sort of, um, you know, side chain handle this or, or different layer? Exactly. Uh, time. Maybe, you know, maybe people think that uh, that's going to, you know, come to market faster. Uh, but, you know, then you could ask the question, it's true. What if we're sitting here in two years and, you know, uh, layer two solutions are more adopted. There's more, you know, open source cookbooks and, and support across applications, um, you know, or, you know, even if you get into what uh, Spectrum's trying to build with their network, uh, mm -hmm. you know, are definitely ways where I think it's if it's obfuscated enough from the in the user experience where they don't necessarily pay that much attention, it may not matter. Uh, it's one of those things you've got to wait and see. Or the um, or the ones that matter educate themselves and use it, and the rest of them just continue to use Ergo as it is. I mean, if if you yeah, you get we're getting, we're getting yeah. We're getting into like one of the most important arguments in the space, which is, you know, the idea of, you know, are we going to scale L1? Are we going to scale via L2? Are we going to have small blocks? Are we going to have big blocks? Um, you know, there's a lot of strong opinions in the space. And the truth is there's a lot of trade-offs. Mm -hmm. And then it's saying, okay, well, within this community, do they, what's the acceptance of the trade-offs? You know, you can go to like the big block side where it's Satoshi Vision, Bitcoin, and <laughs> but, but anyway, let's uh let's move on to the Dev Update for we get in the Dev Update. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to start it off? 
Sure. It looks like first we have Louis Vatra uh, with Paideia. Uh, those of you that don't know, Paideia is a pretty uh, neat uh, smart contract platform that's going to allow people to create and use DAOs that are not just these uh, nonsense, like the word Discord DAO, right? But like, how, how do you, how do you, get like, thumbs honestly, up to vote? Yeah. <laughs> how do you honestly enforce anything via Discord? You know, on chain, that doesn't really make any sense. But didn't you, didn't you say you were gonna put something? You were thinking about putting something on the DAO recently. Oh, I was I was considering. You want me to? You want me to drop that here? <laughs> well, it's so in dark I, chat, right? Yeah, I guess. So I was I was considering the idea of you know taking this whole Twitter nonsense and just throwing it on to a Paideia DAO and letting <laughs> the community have fun. Uh, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe it's not. Um, I don't actually have access anyway, so I can't promise that'll happen, but it'd be interesting to see. Uh, so it looks like he's fixed the bug in the staking snapshot contract, uh, fixed bugs in the staking compound contract, fixed the bug and create proposal proxy contract. Sync proposal status is shown in the front end with on chain status. Uh, so show quorum and threshold needed for a vote to pass in the proposal page. Uh, populate DAO config pa page uh, on chain config values. Um, added some extra validations before creating unsigned transactions for users to sign to prevent cases where a user would want to wait for uh, the automatic refund. Uh, created proposal through the front end, voted on it through the front end, and after proposal ending time, evaluated to pass. So the funds were sent from the treasury. <clears throat> the Main functionality is in place, just needs some further user experience polishing, and we will start inviting a small group of people to test within the coming days. I expect fully public beta in about two weeks. So that's exciting. I've heard two weeks before, I think, from that's Louis. That's two but... weeks leave out your time, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, it is what it is. It's different over there in that country. You know, two weeks is a different time. I think they're metric. They do metric time, Joe. Metric time. I maybe one of those things where it's just like you know, so when it's done, when it's done, right? <laughs> like neat. Don't mess with it. Do you know? Are they coming out on both chains at the same time, or is just Ergo first? I'm pretty sure it's going to be Ergo first. Okay. Uh, we're excited about it in the SIGs at least. Are we getting... Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna yeah. provide a more mature governance solution to every project that wants to use it, and that is huge. Yeah. I mean, let alone just that you can tie in token distribution inside that. So, right, you can create a you can create a vote that everybody votes on, and in that vote, you say uh, X amount of tokens can be spent um, with this vote. If I'm understanding correctly, please stop me if I'm not. Oh, and then if, if, if the vote passes, and those tokens automatically get distributed to whoever was intended in the smart contract, if it fits the templates that they they give out at first. But you know, right now, what we do in the SIGs, and I'm sure in the EF. You guys vote on something, and then you have to organize a goddamn multi-sig party yep. and, and get a multi-sig done and get it out and then send it. So It's messy. Yeah, yeah. But All right, let's see. Who do we have? We have Morphic. Uh, Morphic was in the chat today talking about his original intent, I think, for 10-second block times, was it? Originally in the base of the build? Mm -hmm. A Vergo or something like that? All right, so progress on Sigma. Sigma SDK version 5.0.11 was released. First PR towards 5.0.12 with better modularization of Sigma merged. Second PR towards better modularization is ready for Kushti's review. Um, he's got the GitHub's there if you want to dive into that. And ergo review, reviewed. Um, and next up, finishing moving data serializes a Sigma core module and release Sigma core JS. What... Um, What's this? He doesn't have much info under Ergo. Is this? Um... I'm not sure. What... I can't see what he's pulling without without clicking. Yeah, on I can't see what 2033. Yeah. <laughs> you don't remember that, Joe? What the hell? <laughs> no, you know, and, and one interesting thing to consider is uh, one of the upsides of the clusterfuck that was the uh, difficulty adjustment around merge is it sped up block times so that we were throwing out second blocks. Right? Didn't break the network. Um, but, you know, when uh, we had that rapid difficulty yep, yep. Uh, increase before, um, you know, the adjustment hit, oof, the network was flying. flying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, looks like uh, next we have Green Hat. Uh, looks like Reclez is finished publishing the containerized Oracle Core to Docker Hub uh, and is ready to merge after switch to Ergo platform Docker head account in the Ergo Core repo. Um, looks like they've tested a dozen smart contracts uh, in pretty printer tests and implemented the pretty printing for the majority of the IR nodes. Uh, I'm planning to finish the pretty printer implementation for the rest of the IR nodes this week or early next week. Next is going to help decipher script reduced to false error uh, with the pretty printer tree and evaluated uh, variables. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Riklez is, that's Boris on Twitter, on Telegram, I believe. Boris mm -hmm. is king at, um, is Docker, a real pro at DACA stuff. Oh yeah, it's great, yep. Boris is a guy I called when I was beating my head against the wall with Explorer, trying to get that running for a couple of days. And he helped me out within, <clears throat> I'd say, 20 minutes yeah, <clears throat> and, and also gave me some database optimizations to make it faster. So it was great. He's a champion. For sure. All right. We've got Kushti with a long update. Ergo protocol and reference client R&D. So he's got a PR allowing to generate custom scan for P2S addresses is merged into 515 candidate. It allows for tracking some apps, uh, example, multi-sig or stealth addresses in a very simple way. Oh, interesting. Uh, PR for using estimated next block in mempool and API transaction validation is approved and going to be merged. Uh, revived PR with P2SH address generation, made first transaction spending P2SH input, reviewed a couple of PRs for Sigma, doing prototyping code for a weak block and regulated propagation. I think I can open some things to public in a few weeks. <clears throat> oh, that'll be pretty cool that he's already working on that. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, chain cash working on a single redemption contract for on-chain and off-chain notes. Seems possible and isomorphic progress would mean a lot. Still, as a contract is complicated, but can be split into multiple actions in principle, like Dexy contract, need for more time to finish it. That's a big, that's a big thing that he's just dropped, actually. I don't know if people will realize that. Um, well, fill us in, Joe. Okay, so basically what he's trying to do is he's trying to create Hydra on top of a smart contract instead of a federation of operators. A FAP? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, so if you look at, if you look at a state channel, you have a group that basically, you know, takes a chunk of the state, right? Puts it in a layer two, you know, optimizes it in some sense, you know, maybe there's faster time and lower cost, et cetera, et cetera. And then they settle the state, right? Mm -hmm. And it's basically, it should be a federation. If you look at like the base layer two, it's a single sequencer, which is kind of silly, right? But anyway, um, uh, yeah, he's trying to do that via redemption contracts, which is would remove the need for federation and kind of automate layer twos, which is you know kind of a trip to think about. Uh, so let's see what he does. Bang. So you said you said Hydra. It's it's kind of the same concept of that. As... Yeah, yeah. Hydra is basically an isomorphic channel. Yeah. Okay. He's uh, doing something similar. What's that? Doing something similar, but changing how yeah. you open and close it. Okay, that's really cool. Um, all right, Dexy published a doc about Gort. Tokenomics going to launch the mainnet gold oracle. Uh, yeah, he's been, um, what's it called? A lot of people spun up the Oracle 2 uh, already in mainnet. Yep. Um, I think they have like nine or 10 last time I looked today. Um, yep. Spin it up. I still have to spin mine up. I, I'm just, you know, it's one of those things on the list. <laughs> Don't get your Gort. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that's if anybody, if you guys didn't listen to the AMA today, the difference between Oracle one and two is, um, well, with Oracle one, um, I think I timed it. I had 150 boxes over <laughs> two and a half days of running Oracle yeah, two. Mess. Oh, so yeah. So I, I, I just, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did it after running it for a while and that was almost a thousand boxes I had to do. Christy says like in a month or so, it's like could get up to 10,000 or whatever the count is. So yeah. Fairly messy. You know, you're doing a transaction every minute or even more, depending on how often the price changes. Um, so this is essentially done by, um, right, you have a, a token uh, recognition in your in your possession, and mm -hmm. you're rewarded with the special Gort tokens as well. So much less dust in your in your account, much less box generation. So, you know, 
Yeah. And hope, hopefully easier to set up than Oracle version one. That's for sure. We'll see. I, I think we'll get there. All right. Looks like next we have Blitz. Uh, he says, hey there. Blitz has been pretty busy as of late. Matchmaking in video games is actually hard. Who would have thought? Anyways, we are moving on to working on card abilities and bringing all 172 cards into Blitz, the game, and then the website. And those cards will be updated with their corresponding token IDs once we launch via ErgoPad. Uh, also, they will be at NFT Las Vegas uh, with Dan and several others. Uh, I've made some of these, so expect to see them in this server. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, Blitz will be there. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, I, I can't believe the, the amount of, I, I got to say this every time uh, Mick comes up here, the amount of effort that that man puts in to his game and the amount of love with the, with the ethos of what Ergo is and what he's developing is like the perfect fit for this ecosystem. Um, and um, it's just, it's amazing. Every time I talk to the guy, I'm like, you know, it's hard to stop talking to he him. He has passion. He has yeah. passion. I love it. It's fantastic. I saw him in uh, Denver and, you know, caught up with where the game was. And then I said, hey, we should have custom wallet skins because I saw he was using the uh, DAP connector and then talked to Nemo and said, hey, Nemo, we should, you know, get some CSS skins going. And so that's now on the Nautilus roadmap somewhere. And uh, I also think that Nemo's looking into the new uh, MetaMask uh you know plugins that uh that wallet is supporting to where you could potentially take part of uh nautilus and repackage it and kind of put it inside metamask yeah that's um exciting but yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> interesting that's awesome that's really cool yeah. uh all right here we go captain emo speaking of captain um Nautilus team update. Sigmify only display spectrum prices for assets with at least 10,000 USD of liquidity. Um, fetch holder price directly from the contract box. Oh, that's great. Um, add guardrails to prevent too long bonds to be affected by storage rent. Oh, nice. Okay. That's great. Because there was that concern talking about what if you make a bond that's, you know, yeah. four and a half years old or, or that kind of thing. What's What's going to happen? And what if you make it without ergs in it? <laughs> yeah. In trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, very cool. Um, but uh, yeah, the whole erg price, I think, on Spectrum right now is quite a bit more than the erg price. But it's um, there's like zero liquidity there. You know, it's one of those kind of things. So, but yeah, you saw like um, there's a guy in chat recently that has accumulated a bit of hodl 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 god damn it it's too late to say that joe he's accumulated a lot of it and he's been making some signify bonds with that as collateral so he'll put up he'll ask for ergs he'll put up his uh hodl for uh collateral and then he'll go around and mint more hodl with it and, and go back and, and do another loan. So he's really, and he'll do year-long loans. So he's really under the belief and the hope that hodl is going to raise up uh, a bit so that he can make out. <laughs> Let's see. We'll see. <laughs> okay, we have Ergomatic, finalized monitoring component, and added per plugin log level, level config. What What is Ergomatic, Joe? So we're trying, they're trying to create a uh, uniform bot framework, right? So right, right, now, right, yeah. Right now, if you look across projects, uh, you know, they usually have to have like customized bots that it's something that ideally should be modular, right? Yep. And so it, it could lower uh, dev time quite a bit. And, you know, I, I don't know if you had the chance to dive into the Spectrum uh, Bloom uh, proposal that Ilya wrote up. No, uh, you, you basically he's talking about when you have modular standards and you have modular infrastructure, um, a lot you can do a lot of really neat things on the user level to where, you know, let's say that you ordered, uh, I'll just use the example, a order on a DEX, and let's assume that we had multiple DEXs in the Ergo ecosystem, right? You could do like partial orders and smart orders and. 
uh, you know, you, you can get this idea of like unified liquidity and, and extended UTXO, which is pretty cool. Uh, that way, you know, instead of like maximum slippage in one place, you can diversify orders and, you know, uh, but you need modularity in infrastructure and in design in order to facilitate that. So I do think that having unified bots uh, long term will lead to some really neat things for the user experience. And this is also at the user level as well, if you want to, if I'm not mistaken, if this is what MG Pi was telling me about, this is what you could do. It'd make it easier for the end user who wants to run even off-chain bots to fire up this and maybe change. Yeah, if, it's, if it's modular, yeah. it becomes easier for you to, you know, kind of run your own smart bot, right? Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of cool things if you could plug in things to a modular bot and, you know, then everybody's running their own bots, right? How yeah. cool is it? It's like run your own wallet, run your own bot, um, you know, go with P2P, have your own smart contracts, uh, really cool stuff. That is. Uh, Fleet SDK added uh, uh, CI test to ensure compatibility with browser and serverless functions environments. Crypto added hex encoding and decoding performance improvements. Fixed wrong input string encoding mismatch on hashing functions. And the serializer added support for possibly undefined values to parse uh, parentheses function when in safe mode. Oh, perfect. This landed right on you, Joe. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right. So we got the Rosenbridge update from MHS. I actually, I believe the Catalyst proposal uh, closed. When do, we, when do we know? How long does it take? I think it takes a week. I have no idea why it would need to take Wait, a week. Wait, it's not like on-chain public viewing? I don't know, man. I, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I, listen, that's not my... That's not my like, they should run on Paideia. You know, let's yeah. just say that. But uh, I, think, I think there's some... If I'm, I might be talking out of, out of my ass here, so I should throw that disclaimer out into the mm -hmm. public. But, but I think that... Uh, like you have this idea of ADA based voting, right? And then you also have like a secondary thing where it's like the amount of individual users. I have no idea. I don't know how Catalyst works. That's the Cardano community. We'll have, yeah. to, ask, we'll have to ask Dan in Vegas. We'll have yeah, Dan, 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 well, I think by then it'll be out. So, oh, okay. I mean, That's true. I know. meant how it works. But anyway, I, I, I think that they did pretty well. Let's see. Uh, so with the uh, code gen, uh, it's a code generator that we will use for initializing our backend projects because most of Rosen projects tend toward becoming part of the mono repo recently. We started adding mono repo support to it. Uh, we aim to add three new commands to code gen to initialize the mono repo itself. This subtask is mostly done to add a package to an existing mono repo with configurable features to add an app service to an existing mono repo with configurable features. Note that this code generator is not specific to our project and anyone working on a backend Node.js project can use it. Uh, the main benefit of using this code generator over existing ones is that we always try to keep uh, use technologies and libraries up to date and follow the trends of the ecosystem as much as possible, resulting in modern, uh, well-structured products for you. So. Oops, let me go up a little bit. Uh, then it looks like on the Rosen Bridge P2P, uh, we resume working on the P2P repo. This repo is going to hold all P2P infrastructure logic with our guards and relays. Uh, we reanalyze our requirements and define new tasks to be done. The new updates will be announced in the upcoming weeks. This repo is not public yet. We will make it public in the future after some considerations. Uh, with the Rosenbridge uh, guard service in TypeScript. Uh, looks like the fix bug in one database queries, uh, which would fail in Postgres database. Uh, fixed a bug in updating event status, unexpectedly found a bug in transaction verification, which only delays agreement on Cardano chain transactions. Uh, they're working on a solution. Uh, with Rosen chain, they fixed the bug in box selection slicing and update to depreciated API on the Cardano, uh, weird Cardano. I can't pronounce it either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one thing about the Cardano community. Yeah. They, also, 
like what is this i was like oh it's a mythological creature I'm like oh cool <laughs> cool cool but i can't pronounce it uh next is the uh fix bug and the gen or generate transaction function which <laughs> what's on your mind <laughs> Degenerate. I was think I was thinking about holder. I'm sorry. Uh, fix bug and generate transaction function, which wouldn't consider uh, the transaction fee while selecting input boxes. Oh, so shout out to um um. Let me see where he put it. Uh, the however you pronounce this. Uh, Boris. Uh, um, actually, is part of that committee or or organization. Or whatever mm -hmm. it is, that group that that maintains this kind of stuff and runs it. It's actually when I had to use um, I had to I had to program and point towards um Cardano. I think it was back when I was helping out the angels. You know, I would scan the wallets every night to to figure out who had them, mm -hmm. um, for airdrops and that kind of thing. And that that this tool was invaluable, even compared to um, uh, what is it, Black Frost? I think it's called um, how I Frost. whatever that is, yeah, who Black yeah. Frost. Block frost. frost, something like that. So th it was absolutely fantastic. It lets you do like oh, yeah. um, multiple, right. multiple. Uh, yeah, something. But it's great. That's great. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. We Those have. Continues. Oh uh, wow! You keep keep going. Keep going. Yeah, Continue. keep going. It's still on me. So MHS came back and he said, "This is the last iteration of tests and bug bug fixes." Uh, by the end of this week, we'll freeze the code. I uh, had a great meeting with the cohort of SPOs and received some helpful feedbacks. Well, that's true. I was uh, there in that workshop. It was a pretty nice discussion going on. Um, we're working on tutorials for the watchers and guards. That's going to be the next workshop. Everything's going to be recorded and made public. So, um, you know, hopefully we have a nice small set of users we're working with that will ask good questions. That will then cover everything that everybody else would need when we release it to the public. There's been a decent amount of people asking for um, watcher access or how you to do it and that kind of thing in chat. So yeah. I think you've yeah, got so some interest. The goal is to do a workshop, record it, work with people, get some feedback in the workshop, and then open source it, right? Uh, it looks like the landing page needs some extra love. Uh, that will be done while we're in touch with watchers and guards and getting ready for the launch. Exciting. Are you... Are you um... Anybody else from Rosen coming, or you're representing Rosen yourself there at the? Yeah, at the... it's just, just going to be me. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I think I have a sweater somewhere. I found on Amazon. It says <laughs> Rosen Bridge on it. Wait, what? You had it printed? No, it's just on Amazon. There's <laughs> so, somebody that's selling Ergo merchandise. And I was oh, like, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> Rosen all right, we've got um, Liquid Phase with THCFM. Uh, lots of testing and debugging, smart contracts and creation and interaction. Prepping for trade shows, CNFT Con. So Liquid is going there. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Soon Player, laid out framework for large-scale network audio player. Using Scala with AK ACA protocol for back-end systems and Rust for front-end app. Um, cool. I can't wait to see it. There's nothing more than I want to be able to have my library of um mp3s in one of my wallets and just go to a browser and dump the um address in there and have a beautiful player maybe even with a little visualization there just cranking up my tunes like like in the late 90s on winamp or something that'd be hot i've been, I've been hoping for you know music in the ergo community for a long time like about two three years soon soon tm <laughs> All right, who do we have? We got somebody buried down here. Hey, Maxime is down go. here. Uh, it looks like you said, hey, I made the U Explorer REST API responses. Uh, be the same as the Explorer dot Ergo platform uh, Explorer. Uh, now re-indexing the database and then going to test it for performance and content. Awesome. All right, another one. Um, uh, Death Grips and Analog Ergo. Completed basic test for EVM, ergo atomic swap running successfully. Need to add some more security checks into the system. Planning on copying the script logic into some subroutines as well as introduce some more helper functions to reduce code size and repetitions. Now, atomic swap is the peer-to-peer -peer swap, right? That I'm thinking of? Yeah. That's where you you go, you offer up your stuff, and then... Uh, hash swap contract, yeah. Cross-chain. Cool. Pretty yeah. cool 
Death Grips On or Death Grips On? I'm going to go with the first one. I always have Death Grips On. Death Grips On. Okay. Sounds good. Sometimes it's hard. <laughs> it is. All right. Oh, looks that... like Chris uh, 45. Uh, my development update is Sigma Bot. Uh, delete hot pit exchanges and add more exchanges to the awesome bot. Well, poor hot pet. Yeah. You gotta feel bad. It's like when your ex wife gets a flat tire or something, you know. It's tough. All right, LG, uh, <laughs> LGD on Lily. I'm uh, getting ready for Arrowhack 7. Oh, I wonder what they're going to do. Develop simple NFT debugging tool um, and working on a mass mentor for fun. For fun. Well, that was a hoopla today, I imagine, that they were playing with. Uh, MG Pi. Um, what do you try to say? Oh, six 6,000 NFTs, I think he minted or something like that. Was yeah. Yeah. I saw that he got blocked out of somebody's uh, infrastructure. Yes. For <laughs> I think it was Pulsar has knocked his band him or something. But we changed our we changed all our mempool. Uh, typically, the default mempool size on nodes by default is a thousand, thousand TXs, and I've had mine at three thousand since we did that uh, hodl burn where you know it needed to do a lot and hold it there. Uh, and that was successful, but a bunch of us changed the mempool size to 10,000. <laughs> Good, we're going to try the middle of the network again. Yeah. Nah, well, you got to stress test it. You got to see, you know, it's the perfect oh, yeah. time to do that kind of thing. Now, what, Joe, what perfect, what better day to bring the network to a halt, not a halt, but to really stress test the network on the day that people start buying tokens uh, via Bitpanda? <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, last time when people, what was that, the Negroni noodle token? Yeah. You know, poor Cushy's on an airplane when <laughs> the note gets noodled. Oh, the, um, oh, what's it called? I can't remember the name. Um, Emigroni, I think, or something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that locked up, what did that, that had to reboot the main Explorer or something, or did it clear Yeah, it, lock, it locked up some infrastructure, something oh. got caught in digest mode, and yeah. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, here we go. It looks like a high quality erg. Uh, mm. It's been ages since I provided some dev update stuff. So here we go. Uh, he built a simple betting bot, which uses spectrum pool stats as oracles for tokens, pump, dump, and stable. Uh, yeah, he's been trying to get me to, to bet. He's like, hey, you like <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh man, that's a bad place. To start. <laughs> yeah. uh, looks like uh, building option bets. An example, user X sends an open order in chat. I will buy X token for X price. Bots validate the order when the price is at the given price. That's pretty cool. Uh, build swaps example. User X sends an open order. Uh, first come, first get. Uh, I will swap X token for X token. No validation of Oracle needed there. So with the Telegram, it's uh, at Bet Ninja Bot. Uh, the Telegram beta channel is the Bet Ninja underscore Ergo. Almost all off-chain logic part is done. I would love to create a decentralized version utilizing traceable NFTs with registers to validate the results and simple contracts to hold funds and release it after the result. We'll be presenting this for the next Ergo hack. If you're interested in helping with some on-chain stuff, welcome. So everybody out there that wants to do some on-chain uh, work for Ergo hack, uh, reach out to HQ. I'll uh, probably end up hopping on and losing money. Uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty neat. The first thing he came out with recently, he's been drinking a lot of coffee lately and cranking it out. But the um, the betting bot was pretty neat. So I can essentially type slash. Uh, I forget bet something. Um, type the who I want to bet against, and then uh, type the <clears throat> where the bet is. It will if you're registered with the system, it'll DM you Joe and ask you to confirm. You confirm, and then it just waits. And if within the time frame that it was given, um, the it spikes or dips according to what your bet was, then it'll 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 fire away trigger and then put a status in chat. And he wants to also. 
integrate it somehow or fork or do something with tipper bots. And that's where the rest of the stuff comes in, where you do open orders and, and those kind of things, where you actually have a, a wallet, you know, in tipper bot or, or that framework essentially uh, to where this um, centralized system can pull and take and, and pass coins around between bets and commands there. That's pretty neat. Have you lost any money on that yet, QX? No, no, I'm not. I've lost, <laughs> lost too much money on other stuff. <laughs> Um, was that it? No, there was one more, wasn't there? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, is this an update? Yeah, right? Uh, no, it's a response. Oh, okay. It's like Wombo's talking about the auction distribution. That looks, has always been interesting. Okay, I think that's it there. That's it. I was gonna say, oh no, no, you know, since since I'm here, yeah, and I I can take the liberty of of talking about something from last week. Sure. Yeah. So, um, just for fun, so if you, anybody's familiar with MG Pi's Erg Pi, which is mm -hmm. a Python implementation on how to send transactions, mint mint um NFTs, bulk mint NFTs, send tokens. It can do a simple token send. It can do a multi token send. And uh, different from like the airdrop tool, uh, where if anybody's using the airdrop tool, you put one token in and you put a number of addresses in and it divides those tokens up evenly throughout the number of addresses. So ErgPy gives you actually control over what tokens you're sending and the amount of tokens that you're sending. So one of the tricky things that people don't know how to do with ErgPy is to actually build that Python file for, mm -hmm. um, for that. So what I did is um, for the ErgoHack 5, I think it was, um, I was messing around with like a, a payroll system that ingested CSVs and put them into a database. And then I would build a transaction in the background and push it through. So I just said, hey, why don't I just do that? So I made a front end for everybody. It's, it's built. I haven't actually checked it in a bit, but it's built. You can go there. You can put a CSV into it. That is um, the wallet address you want to send to the token ID and the amount of tokens that you want to send. And every every row can be different, of course. So you can have, you know, comma in one row to one person and um, love in the next row to the same person or another person. You can repeat people. And um, there's a limit of a thousand. We don't want to, you know, because it, it's not going to process if you send more than a thousand. Um, and you hit submit. And within a split second, it it um, spits out the transaction, the entire Python file. So essentially you copy and paste that into a file, name it .py, and you execute it with ErgPy and it does a transaction for you. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it's um, it's um it utilizes both the token and the simple ergo send. So you can airdrop only erg, or you can do a full airdrop of tokens as well. So if anybody's looking to airdrop stuff and you want more control over it, go ahead and scroll up on the or or search for my name there. I have a little video link of it in in progress and working. And then talk to MGPy if you get stuck on ErgPy. It's really easy to use ErgPy is once you get the hang of it. It's like once you build the transaction with the automated thing, you just type in a command and hit enter and you're done. Super easy. It's funny as you're talking about being responsible. I'm reading the dev update and MGPy is like it's going to start in 30 seconds. Six thousand NFT mints have been sent to the mempool in parallel. <laughs> He lo that's his big thing is to send shit in parallel now. <laughs> he even he won't look up anything in loops. He'll look it up in parallel now. So when he looks up like data, he'll just hit it all at once at the same exact time for a hundred queries. Just boom, and see so, you know when I when I look up stuff on the chain, I'll I'll just throw it through a loop. You know it's pretty fast, fast enough for me, but not for MGPy. He's got to hit it all at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems like it. So did he ever get unbanned as a spammer for? <laughs> I don't know. Operating in parallel. <laughs> I think so. I think whoever it was, uh, he was he was all right after that. But I did. Okay. It took it took. Um, uh, I think the first one up, the first explorer up after, was um, the Aneta BTC. Then the Tosi drops, uh, which was won by Boris, and then um, Pulsars. I think was up too soon after that. Mine took a good. I took a good 10 minutes to catch up the main Cornell Explorer that I that I make. Um, but I think it's because I rebooted it twice. So that probably fucked something up when I did that. 
Um, and then the main explorer instance took a little bit. One of one of the main explorer instances took a little bit as well. So yeah, that was it was a fun experiment. I, was, I hope he does it more often, uh, so we can keep stress testing this stuff. It's important to beat the network. Sure is. Yeah. Uh, anything else? That's it on my end. All right, everybody. I would say everybody out there that made it this far in the video, uh, yeah, pay attention to uh, the Ergo hack that's coming out in October. Um, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of ideas. I know that there's been more than a couple teams that have signed up already, which is great to see, especially given the current state of the state and the crypto markets. So everybody out there that wants to participate, build cool shit. Uh, always happy to have you show up and uh, play around in the Ergo ecosystem. And just a reminder to people who might be a little discouraged from, you know, not knowing a lot of code or anything like that. Um, you know, you can, I think somebody wrote a white paper. Didn't Cheese write a white paper for yeah. one of the entries and it got like fourth place, I think, for his white paper on, um, uh, what was that? That was essentially lithium. Uh, is that what it's called? What's this project Lethal. called? Le Lethos, yeah. Lithos. Um, essentially a white paper on that. Um, so that was really cool. So, yeah. And I think uh, Wilford Brimley, no, mm -hmm. is that is that what he calls himself, Wilford Brimley, right? Yeah, yeah. I think he wrote a submitted a paper too as well for something of an idea. So yeah, don't be discouraged if you can't code, and even if you know a little front end or back end, do that. And there's a searching for teams uh, or need a team member um, channel in Discord that you can hop on and see if anybody will help you out with stuff. You know. Yeah, there's always there's always a place where people can be active in the ecosystem if they want to be. Proof exactly. of work. Just if you want to put in work, you know, who doesn't want somebody around that works? Yep. Well, it was a pleasure having you in my basement. Uh, CW. <laughs> let's, go, let's go make some pizza in the oven, Joe. <laughs> sure thing. All right, ciao, everybody.